Hello, today I'm going to be giving you a tour on how to use the EasyPhone T300, a setup guide, and some features of the phone. First, let's have a tour of the outside of the device. There's a camera up here, a flashlight, and the front display. On the side, we have volume up and down buttons and a loop in which you could put a lanyard. On the opposite side, there is a flashlight, which can be activated when the phone is open. On the back, we have the SOS button, which can be long pressed for assistance. And on the bottom, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a charging cord. On the inside of the phone, we have the dial pad, numbers one through nine, with star and pound as well, and the zero key. We have the speed dial button, radio and alarm buttons. We have the left and right navigation buttons, the call answering button and the call declining button. This also doubles as the power button, which we can see by the circle with the vertical line in it. We also have our navigation buttons here with up, down, right, left, and OK. When the phone first arrives, it will not have the battery intact. So begin by sliding off the back casing by sliding it down. This paper inside is my own. Here we can see that the SD card is going to go on the left and the SIM card is going to go on the right. The orientations of these can be viewed in this portion just here. Take the battery. It has three gold prongs and on the inside bottom here we can see the three gold prongs. So align this this way and then you can slide the cap back on like so. For the SIM card, I will not be showing my own SIM card, but as we can see from the image, the notch in the SIM card needs to go to the top right. So when you are inserting the SIM card, it's going to have that information up and the gold or silver technology on the bottom. You can place the phone down on a flat surface, and once you get the SIM card in, push it towards that adapter there. Now that the SIM card and battery are installed, I'm going to show you how to turn on the phone. So begin by pressing and holding this red power button on the right, the second button from the top, until we get the easy phone screen. Here we can see it loading up with the logo. It's going to prompt us for what language we would like, and this button here, OK, correlates with our left navigational button and back with our right. So we're going to say OK to English, and we're going to set the date. So currently it is 2023, so you can use your number pads there. It is the sixth month and the 29th day. That's OK. And we're just going to set it at 12 a.m., perhaps p.m. We are, if you imagine that's the time. And here we can see the preset screen that I have left. Usually the screen is black uh, behind the time, but I have set my own wallpaper, so that is why that is there. So this uh, on the outside will now display the time and day. And if it's not doing that, you can press one of the volume buttons on the side to wake the screen up and show you date and time. This screen is called standby mode, so anytime that's referenced in the manual, this is what they're talking about here. Before I go any further, I'm going to flip us through the EasyPhone Chaperone T300 Quick Start Guide. So if you would like to pause at any point during the video, and give these all a read. I was not able to find this manual online, so I think it would be beneficial for anyone who would like to read this manual to be able to see that. Now, unfortunately, the English can be a bit shaky, so if you are sending this to an elderly parent for them to read it themselves, they may struggle to read this manual. So I recommend that if you are 
uh, setting this phone up for your elderly parents to make sure that you read through this thoroughly and uh, understand all of the features. Okay, so the first setting I'm going to display for you is how to turn off the key tone. So as you can hear, as I press each button, it is going to make a sound. So we can shut that off by going down to settings or by pressing none, and then sound settings or by pressing three, and then into ring settings, which is one, and then down to key tone, which we are then going to set as silent. So as you can hear now, we don't have that tone going. The next piece worth adjusting here is also in settings and in sound settings. In the ring settings, you can set the caller ringtone to a fixed ringtone, and we're going to use right navigation to get that. You can also have message ringtones, which can be fixed or added to. We have flip on tone, which I have set to silent, but does have a tone by default. And flip off tone, which I have silent, but is a sound by default. The next piece is adjust volume. So right now my caller ringtone is very quiet. I don't have a message ringtone. I don't have an alarm ringtone. And my call volume, which is the volume that you're hearing your callers on, I have set for very high at nine. This can be adjusted by pressing uh, OK and then left and right while you're within that OK setting. Next is silent mode, which is like a do not disturb mode and is different from vibrate. So I have this set to off and it is set off by default. Next we have ring type. So in each one of these we can select the ring type we want using left navigation button. And I have all of mine set to vibrate. So again, if you wanted to change that, select is our bottom left uh, option here, which means it's our left navigation button. And you can also hear a ringtone, or you can have it silent, or you can have a ring and vibrate option. Also for keyboard speech, by default, when you go to type a number in from your standby screen, it's going to read that out with a human voice. I personally don't prefer that, so I have that set to off. And incoming calls are announced as a human voice. I also don't prefer that, so I have mine set to off. You can see there it's highlighted with the green bullet. Next, I'll be showing you two ways to set speed dial. So you can begin with the menu, which is the left navigation button, and then go down to tools. Tools is also number eight. If you want to use your keypad, if you press the number eight, it will navigate you into tools. From here, we can go speed dial, which you can also use the number one for, and then option, which is our left navigation button. And you can either manually edit that by typing in a phone number, or you can use the add from contact. So here we'll select Billy. And there is Billy as our number one contact there. We can also press option and delete if we didn't want Billy in that spot. We 
other way to set someone on speed dial is to use the right navigation button to press contact. And then once we hover over their name using the highlighter there, on the bottom we can see we now have options. So using the left navigation button, you can press four or scroll down to four to add to speed dial. And be sure to select one of the speed dial places that is empty here. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up templates because of course this keyboard is not ideal for texting long uh, pieces of information. This one is likely going to be for uh, an elderly person in your life or who will likely be taking calls often. But if they'd like to have texts instead, that's also an option. And some texts can be preset using templates. So first we're going to go to menu using the left navigation button. And then we're going to go to one with, which is message. Then we can see number six is templates. And here are some preset templates, um, such as, okay, sounds good. And there are only a few there, so you can fill the empty templates. To do this, press edit, and then you can begin typing, let's just say, hi. Say okay to that. And from here, if we press okay, we can add a recipient, either by phone number or using the left navigation button, a contact, to send that right away. If we want to send a template from a message, we can begin by pressing message and then write message, new SMS, or you could choose an MMS. Here I will select the contact Billy, and then done with my left navigation button. From here, I can add more contacts if I want to send multiple people at the same time. But since I don't want to do that, I'm just going to press down, which lets me begin typing in the field. Now I'm going to press option to correlate with my left navigational button and two, which allows me to insert a template. Scroll down to the template you choose and then press OK. When you're ready to send that, you can press Okay, which I am not going to do at this time. The next feature I'm going to show you is where to find punctuation. So down here on the star key, if you press that during a message, you can see that there is a variety of punctuation here. And we can see at the top it says one through four. So by pressing pound down at the bottom, we can move on to the next several pages where we can see there are several punctuations and presets. In addition to this, if we press the pound key while this is available, we can see we have various input settings, such as which case we are using, if we're typing with numbers, or we're typing in a different language. So for example, if we need a capital letter, this will make sure that everything typed afterwards is a capital letter. By default, Flip to answer is turned off, so I'm going to show you how to turn that on. Begin by going to menu, and then settings, which is number nine. And then we're going to go to five, which is call settings. And flip to answer call is the top one, which is now activated, but is off by default. So you'll be down here to start come up and press OK so that that little green bullet is checked off. In addition to this, while we're in the call settings, we can go down to Others, where we will see that there is a flight mode. So by pressing OK, we can see a green check in that box. So now we have entered flight mode. And this can be turned off in the same way by deselecting once you no longer want to be in flight mode. There are a few quick keys as well that will be good to know about. Here in your D-pad, your up, down, left, right buttons, if you press the upward button, it will immediately open, well not immediately, but it will open your camera. If you press to the right, you will get your calendar. To the left, you will get a quick opening of messages where you can put in your uh, message as an SMS to your recipient. 
And by pressing down, you can get into your music player. Music can be added to this device by plugging it into a computer. If the brightness needs to be adjusted, this is a setting as well. So menu, and then using nine or scrolling down to settings, and then display, and then scroll down to brightness. There are four brightness levels which I will show you now. And the preset is brightness level three, and my preference is two. While we're here in display settings, let's also go to wallpaper settings, where we can see that we've selected more pictures and we can select the jpeg file that we would like on the navigation the left navigation button to say okay that will be our picture anytime you want to go back to the standby i don't recommend using the back button many times i recommend opening the phone back up again after closing it the next thing i'm going to do with you today is take a tour of everything on the phone. So we'll begin with the menu button. As we can see, there are tasks, which we can create by pressing option. Next, we have the FM radio, which can be scrolled through using the left and right buttons. And we have options that are displayed here. Next, we have multimedia, the camera, a DV, a music player, a video player, and a recorder. We press 5 for the recorder. This is for voice recordings. Next we have image. Here I have two photos that I have taken using the camera of the phone. They're each of flowers. You can also add images to your phone from your computer using the instructions from the manual I showed earlier. There are also SOS settings, which can be navigated through here. There are other videos on how to set SOS numbers for this phone, which are provided by the company. Next is alarm. You can set 10 alarms for yourself, and they can be turned on and off by highlighting and then as you can see, the check mark appears or disappears, and they can also be edited. Next, we have tools, which include things like speed dial, the calculator, calendar, files, Bluetooth, and GPS settings. And also we have settings, which we are now much more familiar with. 